American recyclers often ship it overseas, frequently to countries in Southern Asia. There, workers take apart toxic material by hand, often without proper safety measures. And U.S. policy lets it happen. Exporting their hazardous waste to developing countries rather than properly managing it at home. You're charging on the front side, you're selling the material on the back side offshore. You don't do any work in between, you just arrange to have the material loaded into a shipping container and shipped. It's all about the money. These are old printers, computers, and phones. And this machine's shredding them to be recycled. Only about 17% of all electronic waste ends up like this. It's very hard to recycle electronics. They're not designed to be recycled. The first thing that we're trying to do is remove any steel. A giant magnet overhead pulls out all the steel. This is where the charge is added to the material and based on the plus and minus will repel. So the aluminum gets thrown the farthest away, so that's why aluminum is here. Then the circuit board is in the middle and the plastic falls right down because it doesn't accept the charge. What's left goes into the Dutch sink float machine, named Otto. So I guess that's the only male machine we have. In Otto, plastic floats while everything else sinks. We scoop off the top the good stuff, and that's what will go to Montreal to our plastic compounder, and then goes back to HP to get reused into parts. And those raw materials can make Sims some pretty good money. So we really want to recover that value. So all these elements can be separated and sold to be reused piecemeal. The copper and precious metal streams will go to a copper smelter in Canada or in Europe or Japan. The steel will go to a steel mill here in Tennessee. But with more than 75% of e-waste landfill bound, companies are missing out on huge profits. To put it in perspective, in 2019, an estimated $57 billion worth of precious metals and valuables and electronics were thrown away or burned. 